Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, this is the 50th day after Christ's resurrection. So this is the day of Pentecost. This was the day that the Spirit of the Lord fell up on 120. Oh, Lord, we need that again, don't we? We need that again. We need it so desperately for him to fall again. You know, it's so good that God gave us that Holy Ghost. You know, gave, gave him to us. And once you get the Holy Ghost, I found out from experience, I used to hear, hear about it. You need a refreshing. You need a refreshing of the Holy You need to be refilled, refilled because life throws you a whole lot of curved balls. You go through so much that it cracks this vessel sometimes. And that spirit, that, that anointing just leaks out. So we need a refreshing of the Holy Ghost. I thank the Lord this morning for being so good. Thank him for song and worship service. I thank God for speaking the word this morning. I thank the Lord for just being in this place this morning. He is good. He promised, didn't he? He promised that he would be in this place. So we thank God for meeting with us this morning. What is man that God is so mindful of him that he come down and visit with him? What are we, what type of creatures are we that he wants to come down and visit this man, these people? So God, we thank you for being mindful of us. We thank you, Lord God, for not forgetting about your people, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for remembering, God, that we're nothing but dust, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace. We praise your name this morning. And I do declare, and I know y'all been declaring after the song, it's your season. It's your season. It is. I mean, it's your, it's your season to be blessed. I thank God for my sister for not holding back on my word this morning. She had a dream about me a month ago, and I've been praying. I said, Lord, I ain't going to bother her. I said, but well, Lord, this word is for me. She got to open up her mouth. And today she opened up her mouth, and God, I mean, I mean right where I am in my life today. I mean, very question that I've been asking God. But, Lord, he answered that, that question this morning. Thank God for you being obedient, Sister Selena. I mean, boy, I tell you, God is good. He knows, man. God knows how to do it. He knows what you need. He's, he, he said that. He said, I know what you need before you even ask me. He said, but just seek me. You know, seek my kingdom, my righteousness first. Then all these other things that I know already that you, that you need going to be added unto you. And so God is, man, if you do it the way he'd say do it, it don't seem, it don't seem like it's going to work all the time. Sometimes when God tells you to do something, you get a little shaky. I get a little shaky. I don't know about none of y'all. I know y'all full of faith. <laughs> I know y'all steadfast and unmovable. But I tell you, sometimes when God tells me to do something, I get a little shaky. I said, Lord, first of all, I want to make sure, is that you talking to me? Or is that that enemy? Is that the flesh talking to me? But when you try the spirit, oh, my God, and you know that it's God, man, all things, all things going to work together for the good to them who love the Lord. I'm so glad to be here this morning, so glad, you know, that God applied the blood to my heart. You know, I think about my life. Uh, the road that I had chose, the life that I was in, and I just think how gracious and how loving and kindness he was to me. You know, even before I was thought about being saved, he said, while you were yet sinners, you know, God commanded his love unto us. And so I just thank him for choosing me, you know, as one of his children applying his blood to my heart, giving me another chance at life eternal. So I just, I just love him for that this morning. He is awesome. Give him another praise offering. <laughs> lift him up this morning. He's worthy to be praised. Lord, we lift you up this morning. God, we give you the praise this morning, God. 
We know, God, that you're able, Lord God. We ask, God, that you will help us this morning, Lord God, as we go through your word. Lord God, we ask that you will help us, God, to depend on you, trust in you, God. Have this faith in you, Father God. Lord, you have shown us so many times, God. But God, we pray, Father God, that we don't come to anything else in our life, God, that we will doubt you, God. So, Father God, we pray, God, this morning that you would use me, Lord. Speak to me and speak through me, Father. Lord God, do what you want to do, Father God, this morning. And I just pray, Father God, that your perfect will will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm going to be reading now the book of Matthew, just a couple of verses. Matthew 9, 16 and 17. I know we are in need of a lot of things, but one thing I do believe that we need is another outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We need an outpouring, a new baptism. Another submerging. We need the Holy Ghost. I figured that out. I said, Lord, I come to realize that we need you again. I need to go to the shell station, to his shell station. I need to go to, you know, that old station they used to call Clark and Standard. You know, I need a refilling. I don't know about nobody else. I need God to put some more in me. David said, fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up. That I thirst no more. You're going to thirst, but hey, got to get that out of you first. The book of Matthew chapter 9, starting at verse 16. Jesus talking to the scribes and the Pharisees and his disciples and some of John's disciples. He said, he said no man put a piece of cloth on an old garment for that which is put in to fill it, to fill it up, take it from the garment, and the rent is made worse. He says also in 17, neither do men put new wine in old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish, that they put new wine in, into new bottles, and both are preserved. Here it is, Jesus telling them, and said, look at here, you know, you can't bring this old stuff to what I'm trying to do. That's the, that, that old letter, you got to leave that back there. You, know, you, you can't bring this up into the grace of God. It's not by works. You know, they're still trying to work their way in and, and not by grace. You know, he says you can't put nothing old in something new. This old doctrine that people are trying to put in, not not. Not the gospel of Jesus Christ. All of this other doctrine people are trying to put into these new vessels. You know, that's why people, you know, it's hard for uh, the people to live today because they put in this old stuff. They can't stand today because they put in this old stuff. They don't know how to seek God the way they're supposed to seek God because they put in this old stuff in the vessels and us and the people of God and they can't stand. He said, Jesus said, you can't put it in there. You can't add new cloth to, you can't add old cloth to a new garment. And if you put new wine, he said, into new bodies, what God is telling us, he said, look, you got to have something new in order for you to get something new. You got to have the Holy Ghost inside of you. God said he wants to pour this new wine in new bottles. And Titus tells us that not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing and the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit that does the work. And back then when the Holy Ghost came upon the Holy Spirit, they said it came up on Samson. The Holy Spirit that came up on David, the Holy Spirit that came up on Samuel and all these other prophets. It was the same Holy Ghost. But that Holy Ghost, it worked on the outside for them. It gave Samson strength on the outside. Samson had all the strength that he, he needed to whoop the Philistines with the ass of a jawbone, jawbone of an ass. He, he was whooping thousands of them, but he didn't have nothing inside of him. It was up on him, but it wasn't poured in him. Thank God. Say, thank God that God 
poured something inside of us. That we, we don't fight with the jawbone no more. We don't fight with pistols and knives no more. We, 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 our weapons are not carnal no more. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of the strong. You got to have something inside of you to make you stand in this day, in this hour. You know, because all kind of stuff has come. All kind of things are going to come. And we ain't seen nothing yet. But if you ain't got this new wine inside of you, you ain't going to be able to stand. And so, it's, Titus says, it's by the washing and the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The, there is no regeneration without a renewing, and there is no renewing without no regeneration. Regeneration means God gives a person a new life. You know, I'm so glad that God gave me a new life. He regenerated me. In other words, God gives you another chance at life. You know, and that's why Jesus said, you know, more or not, you got to be born again. And so that's a, re that's a regeneration when God gives you this another life. You know, you're living, but you're not living. And he said you're renewed. You're being renewing by the Holy Ghost, which means to restore, reconstruct, make over or overhaul. And once God regenerates you, makes you a new creature. Any man is in Christ. He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things, they are become new. And then once they become new, then God got to do some reconstruction on you. You know, he, you can't, you're walking around trying to put this new wine in that old bottle. But God got to do something for you. He got to do something with you. God got to do something to you. He got to go inside of you and restore. Some people are broke down inside. God got to restore you. And some people need to be reconstructed because their mind and their hearts just ain't right. You know, they're trying to bring the old man with the new man. You can't bring the old man with the new man. You got to let that old man die. You got to leave him where he is. Just where he was. That old man was a dead man walking. And so the Holy Ghost, Titus said, it restores you. It reconstructs you. It builds you up on the inside, in your heart and in your mind. It gives you a make over it says it makes you what you didn't what you wasn't before it makes you it gives you an overhaul how many know that they need an overhaul when they were say when they was out there how many need an overhaul right now lord i need another overhaul right now i need a new engine right now lord i need new transmission i need a new mind i need a new heart david said create in me lord a clean heart renew the right spirit with me see the right spirit ain't always in you you know, you got to have that overhaul. And only the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost does the work. Not you, not mama, not daddy, not grandmama, not the uncle, not the man next door, not my best friend. Or It's the Holy Ghost that worketh inside of you, that cleans you up, calls you to think different, calls you to live different, calls you to talk different. It cleans you on the inside. That's what happens when he pours it in you. It's the Holy Ghost, not by works, lest any man should boast. You got to leave the old man. You got to kill that old man. Because the old man, sometimes when you, that's why Paul said, I died daily. He said, you got to kill that old man. Because if you don't kill the old man, the old man's just going to keep on following you. You know, he's going to keep on getting on your nerves. You got to kill that old man. Lord, how do I kill this old man? Paul said, I die daily to this world. I die daily to this flesh. Got to leave him behind. Paul says in Philippians 3.13, he said, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehend, but this one thing I do. One thing that we got to do. He said, he's forgetting those things behind me. You got to forget that old life that, as you knew it. Some people, we're still trying to carry this old life with us in the new life. You know, God is giving you a new life. You know, we got the baggages, 
all kind of stuff hanging off of them. You know, all kind of stuff that, that we used to, that we still want to bring into the church, want to bring into our homes. No, God, Paul said, look, leaving those things behind, all those things, leave, don't, not one, don't touch the accursed things. They're leaving those things behind, forgetting all of them and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. And that's righteousness, the Holy Ghost. Love, joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. God is trying to do a new thing in this generation. He is. I mean, your generation, past and mother, and all the elders before us, y'all seen some things. So ain't too much going to be new to y'all. But to us, we got to see what you saw. We got to experience what you experienced. But the only way we can experience that, what you experienced, is if we got to have what you had. We got to have an outpouring of the Holy Ghost that will make you walk right. That'll make you seek him all night. That'll make you say, well, no, I got to go to church. I got, we got prayer on Wednesday. That'll make you drop your tools and say, I can't help you today, son. That'll make you drop your net and say, I can't go fishing with you today. I got to follow Jesus today. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 43. You got to leave those things, Paul said. Leave them all behind. You know, it's a cost to follow Jesus. You got to count the cost. You know, you got to count the cost because you're going to suffer some loss. You know, a lot of people think when they come in, well, well we ain't going God to, God is going to protect you. But we're going to suffer some loss too. I'm talking about loss of lives. Not only things, we, we, we can always say, well, well, we thank God, well. So I like to lose some things, that, they're replaceable. But you lose your lives too, they're replaceable. What's not replaceable with God? We don't die. We live for, forever. God has given us eternal life once we accept him as our Lord and our Savior. It's given to you at that very moment. You don't get eternal life when you die. You don't get eternal life in the grave. You get it the moment that you accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You're walking, living forever, even when you die, because we don't die. He said we sleep, and we shall be awakened again. Isaiah 43, Paul said, leaving those things behind, all oh, forgetting all about them. You got to forget about them, too, he said. You don't bring all this stuff up, you know, about what used to. Bury used to. You got to bury him, get rid of him. used to. You got to get to the point to where you're going to say, Lord, I am going to. I will. This is what I'm going to do, Lord. Not, well, uh, I, I, I maybe. He said, remember, not the former things, Isaiah says. Neither consider the things of old or the things of the past. God is saying, forget about yesterday, y'all. You know, what about you used to do? What about you did yesterday, last week? What about you used to be? Forget, forget about that now. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? He said, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And he said, look, forget. Forget about them. Don't remember the old things. I know, you, Brother Al, you, 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 we just got to talking about, we want to see the things that the mothers and elders seen. We want to see legs grow out. We want to see, we're going to see those things. He said, but look, he said, he said I'm going to do something new. What is something new? Something that never, ever existed before. Can't even think about what that could be. He said, I'm going to do a new thing that ain't never nobody seen before, not even mothers and the elders. I'm going to do something new in your generation. God is going to do something new in this generation. God's got to do something new in this generation. Because what, what was going on last 40 years ain't working today. God said he's going to do something new. He said, I will even make a way in the wilderness. Uh, in the wilderness, he said he's going to make a way. And in the wilderness, we know that's where you're tested. In the wilderness, that's when you're tried. He's going to try you in the wilderness. But he said, 
I'm going to make a way in, the, in your wilderness. Your wilderness may not be their wilderness. Your wilderness can be harder. Your wilderness can be a little easier. But your wilderness is your wilderness. God said he's going to make a way in your wilderness. We got to believe that God's going to make a way in our wilderness. And I found that the, the word wilderness in Hebrew means word or to speak. God said, look, in your wilderness, you got the word. He said, because I'm going to do a new thing. All I got to do is speak it. Speak the word in your wilderness. Don't just go through, don't, don't go wandering in the wilderness like the Israelites did, murmuring and complaining, and they had the word with them. They had God right there with them. We got God right with us, and sometimes we just forget about the word. We forget about speaking life. We forget about rebuking the enemy. We forget about the word that's inside of us. There's a living word inside of us. There's a living word inside of you, but God wants you to speak it in your wilderness. You ain't got to stay. Look, you ain't going to always stay in your wilderness. You can speak your way out of the wilderness. Have you ever met people that, that can speak, they talk their way out of just about anything? I know some people that can just, I mean, they fast talk and they can talk their way just about out of anything. God telling you, you the same way. But you just got to have a word inside of you. You just got to believe God's word. You can talk to yourself right on into that position, brother. All you got to do is speak the word. Don't be talking about what you can't do. You know, well, brother, Al, it's, it's impossible for me. Yes, it is. With men, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Only with God. But you just got to put it in his hand. Lord, you said it. You said I was going to get increased. You said, Lord, that you're going you to exalt me on my job. Lord, you said, I didn't ask for this, Lord. They came to me and they said, and I believe the word. You got to believe the word. Believe what was spoken to you. Sister spoke to me this morning. I said, Lord, I believe the word. I received that word, Lord, because I know it's the truth. She didn't know nothing about that. She ain't know nothing about me asking God what I'm asking, Lord, what I'm seeking. Only God knows. And it takes the Holy Ghost to reveal those. It takes the spirit of the living God to speak life into you, to confirm the word. So don't worry about being in your wilderness. Speak the word. God is not mocked at all. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8, verse 1. See, in your wilderness is where you're going to be tried. Out there were all those backbiters, your haters, people smiling in your face and just wish you just get ran over by a car. You know, you got some folk out there that's just evil. But in your wilderness, you're going to be kept. Deuteronomy 8 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day. Shall ye observe to do that you may live and multiply and go in the and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. You know what? I, 40 years. He said, thou shalt remember all the ways which thou which the Lord thy God led thee 40 years in the wilderness, which is supposed to be, what, an 11 days journey? Took them 40 years. Unbelief. God is so merciful, he just, I'm going to do this just to see what you're going to do anyway. But what they couldn't accomplish in 40 years, we thank God for our Savior, it only took him 40 days in the wilderness. It takes you forever, but it don't take God long at all. You be 40 years trying to get your blessing and take Jesus just 40 days to do what he needs to do for us. We thank the Lord for our Savior. We thank him for the Holy Ghost this morning. We thank him for doing the work for us. He said, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led these, these 40 years in the wilderness. And he said, this is why he led him in the wilderness, to humble thee. A lot of folk don't want to be humble. A lot of folk think they're already humble, but they're high-minded. You can't tell them nothing. They, they really educated about a lot of things, but they have no, no sense at all concerning the scriptures. 
You know, he said he got he he took him out there to humble him. And, and and God loves a humble person. He said, you know, you got to humble yourself before God. And he said, in the due season, he gonna exalt you. You got to be humble. Or get humble. I'd rather be humble. I don't want God humble. He said, to prove thee to know what was in thine heart. God want to know what's in your heart. You know, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments and know. God want to see if you're going to keep my commandment, you know, out here in this wilderness. When times get tough, money get funny, cash register, the, the cashier give you an extra $20, $30 that you're going to keep and say, Lord, bless me. He done, but God want to know if you're going to be honest and say, Lord, I'm broke, but I, this $20 don't belong to me. God going to see where your heart is out there when, you have, when you're in the wilderness. He going to see that if you're honest. He going to see that if you're faithful. He going to see that if you're waiting for him. Lord, I know this don't belong to me, but I know my change is going to come. I know my hour is not yet, but I know it's going to come. I know my blessing, my season is on the way, but I'm going to wait for it anyway. I'm not going to be deceitful, Lord. I'm not going to be deceitful. I'm going to Wait until my change come. And God said he put them in there whether, to, uh, whether thou uh, wouldest keep his commandments or no. God want to see if you're going to keep his word. He want to know if you're going to trust all of his word. You know, some God give us some tests and, you know, some of them, are, you know, you can blow through some of these tests. But some of these tests and trial, you don't know if you're going to have enough to hang on. You know, some of this stuff get hard. And as you grow in the Lord, your faith grows in the Lord. And as your faith grows in the Lord, so does your test and your trial grows harder and harder and harder. But God still want to know if you're going to stand on his word. He wants to know if you're going to be steadfast. He wants to know if you're going to be unmovable. He wants to know if you're going to always be abounding in his word. You got to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abound. I don't care how hard it gets out here. I don't care how much your body uh, uh, start racking with pain. God want to see you standing on his word. Nahum wrote in uh, chapter 1, verse 7, he said, the Lord is good. And we know that the Lord is good. And he's a stronghold. He's a refuge for all of us. We know this. He said, in the day of trouble, but, in the, but he knoweth them that trust in him too. He said he knows the ones that he's, that's trusting. He knows the one that's waiting on him. He knows the one that's believing God. He knows the one that's saying, Lord, I know I, 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 my body hurt, Lord. My knee bothered me. My head bothered me. My kids ain't acting right right now, Lord. But I believe, God, that your word is going to come to pass. I believe they're going to get saved, Lord. I believe they're going to be successful men i believe god that you're gonna open the prison doors and let them out god i believe god of your mercy you said your his mercy is good and endure forever and he says in uh, deuteronomy 8 and 3 he said and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger to feed thee um, with manna which thou knewest not neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee to know that man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord do man live. Here it is. I put you in this wilderness, you know, and I fed you. He fed the man. They, was, they didn't know what it was. They had to ask, what is this? And God is feeding folk today. His manner today. And people are saying, what is it's the word of God that they're eating? They don't understand when you go. And you start ministering and you start testifying and start exalting and encouraging people. You're giving them word. They have no idea that they're eating manna from heaven. They don't have no idea that they're eating bread from heaven. But he said that the, that the bread, they, they, they had no idea. He said, but I'm letting them know that they cannot live by wheat bread. White bread, or all these other kind of breads, these herb breads. You can't live by that stuff alone. But you got to have some word inside of you. 
You got to have the word of God living inside of you that's going to make you live. See, that outer man can live off that bread. He can live off steak and potatoes and all that, but you got to feed that inner man too. He needs some spiritual food. He needs some word. He needs some thus said the Lord. He needs some word that say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear no evil. He needs something that will say that God can do all things. He needs to say, he needs some word that's going to tell him that God will and God is able. We know that God will. We know that he, he's able. But some of us lack the will. You got to know that God will do it. If this word is inside of you, if you're standing on God, if it's according to his will, God will do it. God will do it. We always say, Lord, we know you're able. We know God can do anything. And we know God can do all things and all things are possible with him. But sometimes we have that. But will you do it, Lord? You got to know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt. That God would do it, especially according to his will, especially according to your need. And he said he will provide for you. He said he was going to protect you. Those are the things that you need. He said he'll stand up for you. God will do it. We had, we had this, this young man just blow by our house the other day. and Sister Jackie was sitting standing out there getting in her car and this guy just and he didn't know that she was parked in front of the house and he hit brakes and he said a few choice words so I looked back stared at him and he got on up the street and he said some derogatory things and I rose up that old man wanted to come back I said Lord you deal with him I said bless him Lord bless him I wanted to get in my car and follow him to his house but look, you got to have something on the inside of you. You got to humble yourself. You know, people are going to say all kind of things against you. They're going to speak evil against you, you know, but you still got to maintain your integrity. You still got to be able to stand on God's word and say, Lord, that's deal. you deal with him. But deal with me first. So I won't get out there and, and get myself caught up, Lord. So you got to humble yourself. When you humble yourself, you show modest and low value of someone. When you humble yourself, you show low value of yourself. And you esteem God greater than yourself. See, a lot of folk don't want to humble themselves. They want to be the Mr. Know-it-all. They want to do it all. I can do it. Let me do it. Let me shine, Lord. God say, let, you, let your light so shine before men. And, you know, that they may see your good works. What's your good works? And it always run in your mouth. It's, it's, it's time to be quiet sometime. It's time to take them, those curse words like David said. Look, leave them alone. Let them curse. Maybe it's, the, maybe it's God's will that, you know, hey, look, let them cuss me out. You know, they cussed Jesus out. You know, they cussed him out. But it shows very low importance of your own self. That's what humble me. You got to humble yourself. You got to know that you ain't all that. You got to know that there's somebody greater than you. You got to know that there's somebody greater inside of you. You got to know that there's somebody greater that's around you. God gives angels. He gives us angels. They're watching over us. They're protecting us each and every day. We got to know that God is the one that's protecting us. Is that God humbles you to show you how important that you are not. And some of us, some of God's folk need to know that they ain't all that important. They're important to him, but they ain't where they think they, they are. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that you may be exalted in due season. Your season come to be exalted, but if you humble yourself, it's going to come. Some people think they're all important, but they ain't important as they are. James wrote, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to those that think low of themselves, humble themselves. You can't provide anything without the Holy Ghost. You can't protect yourself without the Holy Ghost. 
You can't heal yourself except to be by the Holy Ghost. You can't do nothing without him except to be by the Holy Ghost. In him do we live, move, and have our being. It's the Holy Ghost that's moving. It's the Holy Ghost that's moving around. It's the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Acts 2. Acts 2 verse 1, go down to the 13th verse. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Here it is, he's saying, Luke right? he said on the day of Pentecost, on a day like today, the day of Pentecost, and when it was fully in motion, all his people that he said go, those 12, he told them to go in Jerusalem, wait until you be in do it with power from on high. They were in one place and one accord. So it must have been something going on to where they weren't on this one accord before. God is telling us we got to get on this one accord. Mother's been saying it. Several others have been saying it. It's one accord, one place. We got to have the same mind. I believe they had the same mind. They were up there praying for the same thing. I don't know if it was for the Holy Ghost or it was for them to get their hearts right. Whatever they, that one accord is, God is looking for us to get on a one accord in one place. And then he said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind that filled all the house, not just the house, it filled the house where they were sitting in. Now, the Holy Ghost come down and fill this house where we're sitting in. The Holy Ghost is going to rest up on each and every one of us that's on one accord. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire and set upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Here it is. They say, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these speak Galileans? Here it is, the Holy Ghost came and sat down upon these people and they began to speak with unknown tongues, unknown to themselves, but they had witnesses there that can interpret it, what they were saying. God gives us tongues, but this is the Holy Ghost I'm looking for. This is the tongue that I'm looking for. I, I, I want God to rest upon me like he did on the day of Pentecost where somebody that's not of this nation, that's somebody that's not of my culture, that when God began to speak to me, give me others that I would be able to speak to them in their language. That was amazing to these men. And they say, on all these that speak, are they Galatians? And how? Here we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. We need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. Parathens and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and the Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Ferga and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya about Serene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arab, Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own, in our tongues, the wonderful works of God. It's only the works of God. We, what all I'm trying to say, saints of God, is what I said in the beginning. We need the infilling, a rebaptism of the Holy Ghost. We need God to drop down in this place and fill us with the Holy Ghost. But only, only when we get on the one accord, only when we get to this one place in our 
in our mind, one place in our, in our hearts that we're seeking God, we're seeking him for the same thing. And verse 12 says, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one another, what mean is that they couldn't believe what they were hearing? A lot of people ain't going to believe what they're going to hear when God fall upon the church. When God fall upon his people, they ain't going to believe them, what, they, what they're hearing. They ain't going to believe their ears. And others mocking, he said. And mothers all mocking said, these men are full of new wine. Here it is, it's saying these men are drunk. They are full of new wine. And during this time, it wasn't no harvest season for the grapes to get no new wine. If they had wine, it was the old wine. And we know the old wine ain't all, old wine can get you, it can get you a little bit tipsy. Old wine can get you off balance. But it ain't going to cause you to speak with a tongue that somebody else can interpret it. When you, when you are drinking old wine, it's going to cause you to speak to what nobody can understand you. Not even yourself. It's going to cause you to stumble out of there and make it look like you got the Holy Ghost. A lot of folks stumble out of church, they look like they got the Holy Ghost. But when they leave, they ain't got the Holy Ghost because they can't live right. They can't love everybody. They have a problem loving their brothers and their sisters. They have a problem loving that neighbor. The neighbor don't speak to me and I ain't going to speak to him. You know, they look like they got the Holy Ghost. They may sound like they got the Holy Ghost. But somebody need to understand what you're saying. And he said, these men are full of wine, full of that new wine. They couldn't have been full of the new wine because it had not been harvest season yet. You know, that we need some new wine. That's what Luke is saying. That's what the Bible is telling us. We need to get full of some new wine. This old wine has seeped out of us. Somebody them leaked out all that old wine. We need a new bottle. We need a new vessel. And the only way we can get this new vessel, this new bottle, is God fix the leak in these vessels. You know, that song that says there's a leak in this old building. And my soul has got them. Your soul ain't got to move nowhere. You got to get right. You got to get clean. And the only way you can get clean is through the Holy Ghost. Yo, so God going to seal. He going to put you back on the potter's wheel. He going to make you over again. And you won't be leaking nothing out. The only thing you be leaking out is the word of God. You be leaking out love. You be leaking out patience. You be leaking out all the fruits of the spirit. Joy, happiness, peace in the Holy Ghost. It's the new wine that, that God is saying that we, that we need. And, and, and Peter stood up and began to preach and thousands got saved. He said, these men that you suppose that are drunk, they're not drunk. It's only the ninth hour of the day. The third hour of the day it was nine o'clock in the morning. Who gets drunk? They did and they had some. They had some men that were, you know, notable men. They, was, they weren't like we are today, pastors. <laughs> you back and laughing. We got people get up early in the morning and grab that bottle. We got folk get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. That's their breakfast. Noontime, that's their breakfast. Dinner time, that's their breakfast. They drink all day long, but these men weren't drinking. And I found out that they had a certain time that they had to drink this wine. And it wasn't at 9 o'clock in the morning. So we got folk get up at 9 o'clock in the morning and drink and say, oh, thank the Lord. God has blessed me. Now I'm full. You full of that old wine. We need some new wine. We need the Holy Ghost. And he said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Only way you can do what Peter and Paul and all the disciples do, you got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Paul couldn't cast out no devils without the Holy Ghost. Peter, he couldn't stand up and face the people who persecuted Jesus and caused him to die. He couldn't, he couldn't stand up with boldness without the Holy Ghost and preach a sermon like that. Paul couldn't shake off a snake without the Holy Ghost. 
Samuel couldn't do what he did without the Holy Ghost. All I'm saying is today, saints of God, we need a new feeling of the Holy Ghost. We need to be revived again. We need to be reconstructed again. We need to be made over one more time. That's why Jesus said you got to be born again. We need the Holy Ghost in this day and hour. Otherwise, we'll be sitting here doing the same thing over and over and over again. We need new life in us got to have new life and the Holy Spirit is the life that's your lifeline Samson couldn't do nothing without the Holy Spirit can't do nothing without the Holy Ghost we can't do nothing without the Holy Ghost he said this is that which the prophet Joel spoke of he said your sons and your daughters they gonna prophesy the young men gonna have visions the old men going to dream dreams. We need visions. We need dreams. You know, the Bible says my people perish without a vision. Where there's no vision, come on, there's no life. We got to have some visions. We got to get down to business. Lord, look, we need that outpouring. I wish I could knew that song. There was a meeting on the day of Pentecost. Oh, Lord, we have a meeting every day. We have a meeting every day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. And a lot of folk want to think, he's talking about his, his people, his, his saved folk. He said, upon all flesh. All flesh. He said, he's going to do it. Your sons and your daughters, they're going to prophesy. We need some prophecies. We need God to speak to us. The old men going to have the dream. We need somebody to have some dreams, some godly dreams. Young men got to see. We need some visionaries in here. We got to have it. But we're going to get it because he said he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh in the last day. And I know we're living in the last days. If you can just tune in just for a little while on your phone, on your computer, on your TV, even on the radio, you're going to know that we're living in the last day. We're living in the very last day. And he says in Acts 2.21, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You got to call upon the Lord. Peter was Pouring out his heart to these people. Don't you know that they was refilled over and over and over? In John 20, when the Lord breathed on them, he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. I don't know about nobody else. They had the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, they received the Holy Ghost. Acts 4, they had to be refilled. Peter was refilled to have boldness. You got to have the Holy Ghost to have boldness just to stand up today. Just to even walk upright. Because folk going to criticize you no matter what you do. You ain't got to say nothing to nobody. <clears throat> folk going to criticize you. But you got to have the Holy Ghost to have holy boldness today to walk anyway. But it takes the spirit of the living God. It takes him. Without the spirit of God, nothing gets done. That's why Jesus said he had to go. I must go because if I don't go, he can't come. And if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, I ain't saying nobody ain't saved. That ain't scripture. Well, this one guy had me so upset, told me because I haven't spoken tongue, I wasn't saved. And I dropped, and I'm like, I didn't say too much. I started thinking. I know I haven't spoken in no one of them tongues. Well, I haven't spoken tongues. <clears throat> I'll say that. I started searching the word. I said, Lord, that can't be true. That can't be right. And when Paul went to some people, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you first believed? So you can be a believer. But I tell you, there's power. And the Holy Ghost. I used to hear them say that all the time. 
But I've experienced the power of the spirit of the living God. But you got to be born again. You can't be born of the flesh or the blood or the will of man. But you got to be born of the spirit of the living God. God is going to pour out his spirit once again. He ain't through pouring it out. He got children. He got sons and daughters down here yet. He got people that still need him. He got still, I need him. My children need him. My family need him. I know you need him too. We need you, Holy Ghost. We need direction. You can't can't go nowhere without the Holy Ghost. He's going to lead and guide you in all truth. He's going to comfort you when nobody else is around. When daddy ain't there no more. Or when daddy just can't get to you. You got to have the Holy Ghost to comfort you. You got to have the Holy Ghost to lead you and guide you. You got to have the Holy Ghost to strengthen you on the inner man. You know, a lot of folk ain't strengthened on the inside. They feel like they can run through a troop, leap over a wall. But when the tests and the trials come, that wall comes crumbling down. It gets so big it can be a little bitty wall. I can't make it over that wall. I'm just tired. I'm wore out. I just don't feel like it no more. Some of them waving the towel. Get rid of your towel. Throw it away. And know that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you by the Holy Ghost. You can do it all if he strengthens you. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last day, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He's going to do it again, saints of God. Let's be crying out for, to God for a refreshing, a renewing of the Holy Spirit so we can see the signs. Of one. You ain't going to see no signs. Of one. We, got, we got to experience. You know, then only then we'll experience when we lay hands on the sick. Only then that's when they're going to recover. Only then when we speak to the mountain, it's going to move out the way. We need the Spirit. We need the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, the mountain ain't going to move. We lay hands on folk. We want to see them get well. We want to see, the, we want to see the, the blind eyes open, spiritual and natural. We, got this, we, we need to see it. We want to see it. But, Lord, we're asking you to pour out your spirit. Put us in a place, Father. I'm done. Put us in a place, Father God, where we can be on one accord. In one place, God, one heart, one mind, Father, that you will see us, Lord God, seeking your face, God. And, Lord, we pray, Father God, give us, God, another outpouring of your spirit. We need it in the land, Lord. Not only here, God, in the U.S. of A, God, but we need it all over the land. Lord, we need you today, God. Help us, Father God, to humble ourselves, O God, under your mighty hand. Lord, help us, Father God, to seek your face, Lord God. Seek it, God, with all our hearts, oh God, all our soul and all our mind, God. Father, we ask this, Lord God. Help us, God, go throughout this week, God, thinking and contemplating, oh God. Oh God, seeking your face, God, at work, God, at home, God, in the car, God, that the Holy Ghost will fall upon us, God, afresh. We need a new. We need a renewal, Lord God. We need to be reconstructed, God. Help us, Father. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, this is my prayer. My, my cry, God, this is my prayer, Lord, my plea, Lord Jesus, that you come down, God, and meet with us again, like you did in the olden days, Lord God, like you healed, God, hallelujah, God, stretched out legs, God, oh, God, put eyes back in the sockets, oh, God, pour gold in the teeth of, the, of people's mouth, Lord God, Lord, we need that Holy Ghost, Lord God, we need you to move for us, Lord, Lord, if you don't move, God, won't nothing move, God. So we ask you, Father, and we thank you, Lord God, even in advance, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank and praise you, God, and give you glory. Hallelujah. God is good. All I'm saying, saints, God, we need an outpouring. We need another move of the Holy Ghost. We have a whole lot of movements out here, but we need a move of the Spirit of the living God. We got a lot of movements that's going on out here. God bless you on this morning. Anybody need prayer? Anybody want to stand in proxy for something?